Welcome to Rosebud Homestead. Last week we released a video on shredded chipotle beef for taco meat and it was pretty popular. In fact, one of our local viewers um, saw me out in town and said, Pam, is there any way that we could do that in our Instant Pot? Could you show us how to do that? So I thought, wow, that's a great idea. And we're always open for viewer suggestions on what they would like to see. So if you have an idea, just let us know in a comment. But today we're going to do pretty much the same recipe that we did last week in our video, but we're going to be doing it in an Instant Pot and we'll get started on that in just a moment. The ingredients are pretty much the same. I've made a couple of little adjustments. I'm going to be giving the ingredients for one pound of meat. So for every pound of meat, and these are just chunks of, Jim found a really good buy on um, a rump roast, and so that's what this is. Beef is so expensive these days, so he watches for sales and gets whatever is on sale. So for every one pound of beef, we're going to add two tablespoons of chopped chipotle and adobo sauce, and I explained a little bit about what that was in the previous video. We're going to do um, two cloves of garlic per pound. We're going to do one cup of onions per pound. We're going to do um, one fourth cup of chopped cilantro per pound. Now, I have two and a half pounds of meat chunks here. So the great thing about the Instant Pot is we're just going to dump everything in, set the time, and let it go. So this is two and a half pounds of beef that I'm just going to dump right in here. And there's nothing else in here. Now my Instant Pot is old. I've been using it for three years and boy have I put it through its paces. So it's probably not as new and wonderful as yours is. But this one works great for us. So in goes the meat. In go the onions. In go uh, the cilantro. And this is for two and a half pounds of meat so it's about three quarters of a cup. And then um, this was about 10 sliced garlic cloves. So those go in. And then the chipotles go in. And this is uh, chipotle peppers in adobo sauce. And that's the heat uh, for the taco meat. Heat meaning the um, pot peppers. Then we're going to put in one teaspoon of oregano per pound. So this is going to be about um, a scant tablespoon, two and a half teaspoons of oregano. That's good enough. And then a teaspoon of salt per pound. This is going to be quick and easy. This is the kind of a setup that you would want to do if you were having like a group of uh, people over for dinner. This would be a great way. Now I'm just going to put a little bit of water in the bottom. Um, these ingredients are going to make juices of their own, so I don't want to add too much. That's probably about right. Then um, I'm going to check my seal to be sure that it's in place in the proper position. Then I will invert that. All right, and then I make sure that the um, weight is in the proper position, which means it's sealed. Then I'm going to turn it on manual, and I'm going to set the time for 20 minutes. And there we have it. So this will process for 20 minutes. We'll come back when it is done. While this is processing, I am going to prepare the fixings for um, what I'm going to make with this taco meat. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you exactly how we put everything together in um, 
meal that is not exactly tacos, so it's a different way that we use taco meat. So when this is done, we'll come back and I'll see you in just a minute. The buzzer just went off, this is finished. You can see that it's already counting down the wait time. So I'm gonna take uh, the handle of a fork then and move the weight over to venting. First time I ever did that when my um, instant pot was brand new, I did it with my finger and that was a mistake. I got a steam burn on my finger so now I always use a utensil. So we are letting the pressure escape. This will take just a minute. And then we'll open it up and we will check the condition of the meat. And if it is not soft enough to shred with a couple of forks, then we'll set some more time. Uh, meanwhile, well, in the 20 minutes that this was processing, I went ahead and prepared our taco fixings. And you can put out, of course, anything that you want. So we have cheese and lettuce and tomatoes and sour cream, or in my case, it would be plain Greek yogurt because watching my calories there. And then of course we have some corn chips. So in just a minute when this is ready, we'll fight this and this is going to be my lunch today. Um, Jim will do his own and he is probably going to choose the next size larger plate um, than I do. So sounds like this is just about ready to go. There we go. That little extra burst of steam was the airlock falling down. So now I know that it is safe to open this up. So we're gonna do this very carefully. And I'll set this aside. And then we'll have Jim come over and take a look at what this looks like right now. See how juicy it is in there. So we really don't want all that juice, but that's okay. So I'm gonna stir it up. And I do not believe that the meat is soft enough to shred. So let me just check it. No, indeed it is not. So we're gonna set this for another 20 minutes. So we'll be back and try it again in 20 minutes. It just finished its second 20 minutes cooking and I tested it. In fact, Jim and I both taste tested it and it is wonderful. So I'm going to scoop it out of all of the liquid and bring it over here to this other bowl and we will do the shredding right here. I'm gonna save this liquid. The liquid is gonna be very, very tasty. And so after I've shredded it, if it needs some more liquid, then we have all of this here we can draw upon. All right, I think I have all the meat. Here are some more of the onions. Oh, one last, two last pieces of meat, looks like. Okay, so the next part is just to shred the meat. And you just pull it apart with a couple of forks. Now when we did the pressure canning of the other, in the other video, the meat you could just smash after it had pressure canned for 90 minutes and it would fall apart as we go. This has a little bit more body to it. It is not quite as soft as when we did the pressure canning in the other video. But this meat is also very, very flavorful and it will keep more of the body in it as we get it ready to have our taco meal. So I'm gonna finish pulling these apart. It's gonna take probably 10 minutes for me to do this. And we'll come back when that is all done. So this is now in bite-sized pieces, shreds. We need to cook this meat until it is falling apart soft. So sometimes that takes a time or two through the Instant Pot. This recipe would also be good for a slow cooker as well. So this is how we will put this together in a meal. And when we serve it this way, I usually just spread things out buffet style. So a person would pick up their plate, 
I'm starving, so I'm going to go first. And I would just put here as many chips as I want on the bottom. And then some of this yummy taco meat. I'll tell you, when I would do, was doing this for my family um, years ago, when my children were all little, they just loved it. But I would just cook hamburger to do this. Little did I know how delicious this type of meat was. So my children, some of my children have not tasted this latest version of, of what, what we do with this taco meat this way. So we just call these stacked tostadas or stacked tortillas, whatever we want, or open salad, open taco salad. A little bit of cheese, some lettuce and tomato, and then some plain Greek yogurt for me or sour cream for Jim. This meat, um, generally we would use salsa for this meat, but we don't have to, well I mean we used to use salsa when I made it before this recipe, but with this recipe it doesn't need anything else for us. So this is what it looks like, and we're just thrilled to um, have this yummy recipe now that we can do either by pressure canning and keeping it on our shelf in the previous video, or now by doing it either in an instant pot or a slow cooker and um, having it ready for a large family or a gathering or just the two of us. So thank you for joining us, and we'll see you for our next video. Thank you.